Hello, and welcome to Shaking and Sipping. This is the show where we shake up a cocktail or other mixed drink, give it a sip, talk about its history and variants a bit, and see how it is. We're continuing to work our way through the IBA's list of official cocktails to see how those are and which really belong on that list. We're still in section one, that's the unforgettables, and this week's unforgettable is the monkey gland. Before we talk too much about the drink itself, we need to talk about that incredibly strange title, Monkey Gland. Um, There was a bit of a craze back in the 1920s, pioneered by um, Russian-born French scientist Serge Voronov, Um, and he had some wacky ideas. Um, They involved curing people and creating additional virility in people, as well as giving animals more energy and all sorts of things by taking bits of testicles from some animals and sewing them into testicles of other animals because that's a good idea and it definitely works. Don't fact check me on that. Um, anyway, this was a craze. This was a thing. He did it. Some other folks tried it. it happened, like hundreds of operations. I don't know. It's a thing. It was going on. It was happening in France originally, like I said. That's where Serge was. Um, so this drink, fittingly, was named in sort of honor of the craze um, by our old friend Harry McAlone at Harry's New York Bar in Paris. Fear not, though, this drink does not include any body parts in its construction, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, let's talk about the drink itself. Uh, This is going to be a pretty quick one. I know last week's was pretty quick as well. Um, There's just not a lot of history and variants on these to talk through. Don't worry, we'll have some meteor episodes coming up again in future, but this one is going to be a gin-based drink. Our main mixer is orange juice, and then we're going to add a little bit of grenadine, which we talked at length about last week, so I'm not going to have a second episode of Let's Talk About Grenadine, um, as well as absinthe. So that is what it is. I'm going to make the IBA spec first, and then there really aren't variants other than a few folks who have slightly different proportions of things, but there is a historical note about the absinthe, so we'll play with that in version two. All right, let's mix up the IBA spec. All right, so to start off with, we are going to need some orange juice. So I'm gonna begin by juicing an orange. And we'll start off with one and a half ounces, that's 45 milliliters of our fresh orange juice. There is a little bit of pulp and some little seeds in there, but that's not a problem. We will double strain when we're serving. And then of our gin, we want dry gin here, though I think a Plymouth would also work very nicely. We want an ounce and a half or 45 milliliters. And then we want about a tablespoon. This is really the only place that early recipes vary is Some call for some number of dashes of absinthe, some call for um, a tablespoon, some call for a bar spoon. So it's a small quantity. I would say go lower rather than higher. Whoops. So I used about three quarters of a bar spoon there. And then with the grenadine, same thing. Some sources vary on the exact amount, but it's in the range of a bar spoon. Might have been slightly heavy. It really won't hurt anything. I'm gonna grab some ice, we'll give it a shake. All right, we have one big, few little ice cubes going in. Let's give it a shake. And then I'm gonna strain that into an ideally chilled Nick and Nora glass. And the IBA version does not call for any garnishes. 
I've seen some sources call for a maraschino cherry. I've also seen some sources call for orange zest. I'm gonna try it without first, and then we'll try adding those to see what those do. This is our IBA spec monkey gland. Mm. Okay, so that's really interesting. Um, it's sweet, orange is most of the palette. The absinthe comes in there really nicely. Yeah, um, so the orange is kind of rich. I think that the gin botanicals are actually playing well with the orange there, and so they're almost reinforcing the oranginess of it, the way that like um, like baking spices in a pie bring forward the fruit in that pie. Um, and the grenadine is nice and sweet. That's keeping everything in that you know orange adjacent area as well, but almost in a slightly orange candy sort of way. But then the absinthe is present throughout, but especially at the end as you begin to breathe in the back of your throat, you get that um, anise hit. I, I think this is pretty good. Let's see if it is improved or changed by the addition of any garnish. So I'll express some orange over the top. Yeah, um, so it's right on the nose. Ex um, expressing the orange definitely makes a difference on the nose. It's a lot brighter. And I'd say it makes the drink a hair more orangey even. I don't think the flavor difference is huge, but I think it actually slightly mutes the absinthe because I'm getting the, um, the volatile oils first of that orange right off the top. I think actually, um, in terms of improve or not, I would add the orange twist, but not express it. I would just add it in the glass. You'd still get a little bit of nose off of it without really affecting the drink. And then just to gild the lily a little bit, I've seen some recipes, like I say, that call for either orange or maraschino cherry. I have seen some call for both. So let's see what that does. I should also say, since I'm basically covering every variant for this fairly low variant drink, um, the one other variant I've seen of this is to build it kind of layered, kind of tequila sunrisey, uh, with the grenadine separated. I'm not trying that one today. Okay, so the addition of the cherry isn't enough to throw this drink any place. Let's see what it tastes like with it. No, it really doesn't go that well. That's a, that's a dumb idea. All right, so takeaway, IBA spec, add your orange twist, don't express it. I realized when I was dumping out my shaker, I said we were going to double strain, and I did not. It worked out okay. Uh, my Hawthorne strainer caught all the little bits for the most part, but we could have definitely gotten better clarity had we done so. So we'll make sure to do it this time. Let's begin on the one variant of this drink that does seem to have existed, and it makes sense time-wise, right? This is a drink product of the early 20s. Um, absinthe was still around then, though it was starting to get banned some places. Of course, then by mid-century, absinthe is gone most places in the world, um, at least many places in the world. So obviously pastis was used a lot, but what I've read multiple places is that Benedictine was used quite a bit. And this is an interesting French liqueur made from roots and a whole bunch of flowers. Um, pretty cool product. I don't know why the labels fell off of mine, but that's a thing that has happened. So we're gonna try this with Benedictine to see what that does for us. We're gonna start again with orange juice in the same proportion, one and a half ounces or 45 milliliters. And I may have to juice that other one. I will. All right, one and a half ounces. Same proportion of gin, and I'm just sticking with my old standby Bombay Standard. One and a half ounces, or 45 milliliters. Same with the grenadine. We want about a bar spoon.
And then finally, our only change, we're gonna go with about a bar spoon of Benedictine. I'm really curious what this is gonna do because the absinthe was really the only identifiable component other than orange in the IBA version. So I'm very curious how that's gonna shift. But nothing better to do than to find out. I'm gonna grab some ice. time properly double strain into a ideally chilled Nick and Nora glass. And yeah, that actually, even though it's still not translucent, that is actually more clear than it was without the double strain. All right, this is a Benedictine variant of the monkey gland. Ooh, that's nice. So the Benedictine actually comes through really nicely and it's more integrated. Um, it's kind of floral and just all the way throughout. So there's just a, it's still orange at your baseline, but then there's just a florality that's sort of high on the palate that's just floating throughout the drink. Um, it, there's not a ton of evolution. It's not doing anything crazy. Um, it's just nice. Um, I could see this being a really nice uh, hot day outdoor sipper. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yeah, very nice. Well, thanks so much for coming along with me today on this adventure as we looked at the monkey gland. Be sure to uh, like, share, comment, bell ring, click on related videos, all that super fun YouTube stuff that no one's ever told you to do before if you liked the video. Check out the blog at shakingandsipping.com where you'll see a write-up on this and each other drink as well as most weeks the day after a video comes out, IBA in the real world, where we'll see what happens when we order this out at a local cocktail bar. You can follow on Twitter at shaking underscore sipping for Twitter type updates. And we'll be back next week with a drink that is one of my absolute favorites off the IBA's list. And until then, happy sipping. Cheers.